Hey guys, it's Anthony. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to talk about where the market went this past week, where we think the market's going this coming week. And if you're looking to become a consistently profitable trader, definitely hit that subscribe button. I personally trade ES and NASDAQ futures. So if you trade that, you'll definitely want to subscribe. It's taken me just over two years to become consistently profitable. Lots of trial and error, lots of lessons learned and lots of pain. But over time, I became more consistent and I believe that you will as well if you're not already. So without further ado, let's dive into the charts. We're taking a look at NASDAQ on the daily chart. And if you saw my last video, I was it was in a long and I, ex I went over the four hour and the one hour saying that we were bullish in the one hour, starting to get bullish in the four hour. We'll go down to the one hour first. So in the one hour, last video, basically I was saying that we're putting in these lower highs constantly, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. But then we pushed up, we swept the high to the left, we sold off, we put in a higher low. And then Thursday, we were pushing up. Friday came now, and I said in the last video, uh, I went over the levels. I'll just insert the clip here, but I was talking about these levels I had marked off at 15,020 and 14,820. These are levels I have marked off, and uh, I was saying that it's likely that we're going to push up here and retest, and you want to get on long on the retest and just put your stop below that low and target new highs. What we want to see for bullish is we want us to push and close above this 15,000 area. And then on a pullback, we would love to see us hold about 14,830 as a support. And this is a level I have. Uh, and then push back up. And then as soon as we closed above this high we made at 15,000, uh, that's when you say, okay, we're bullish. And essentially, it's safe to get in along there and target above 15,300. If you want it to be safe, you could just put your stop below the higher low right here after it happens and then put your TP there. I'm currently still in my long uh, 15,873 uh, stop below the lows and my TP is into the fair value gap from FOMC when we sold off halfway through which is about 15,240 and it is a about a 1.3 R and once we push up a little more I'll move my stops below this 14,820 level which should be near by break even and I'll be targeting that 15,240 area. So that's just the NQ on the four hour. So now on the four hour, we're quite bullish. Uh, one last thing for bullishness, obviously, is we would just like to see us break uh, 15,060 because at that point on the four hour, you would see a low, you would see a high, you would see a higher low, you would see a higher high right there. And then we pushed up again and we had had another higher high taking out these highs, which are important highs in my opinion. And then we sold off. And now if we can make a higher low here and push up again, then to me, that's extremely bullish. So we want to start looking for longs. Now, of course, if you go to the daily chart, we're far from a bullish market structure on the daily chart, uh, because realistically, I think you would need a close about 15,450 to be bullish. Uh, and we're far away from there. So daily chart, still too far from being bullish uh, weekly chart same idea still too far why because we have a high we have a low we have a lower high and a lower low so weekly chart we need to get above 15,870 to be bullish let's go to the monthly chart of course the monthly is bullish but on the monthly you would basically expect us to get down about 14,400 to 13,700 because there's a lot of empty trading here and there's no real support until 14,450 uh, or 13,700 but that's of course on the monthly chart uh, on the weekly chart, we do have a lot of support. We are here now at 14,700 uh, and then even more support at 14,400. And that's the low, that's the lowest I expect us to get. So basically I'm in a long, I'm still kind of on the, in the camp that we are going to push up and most likely just get to my target 15,240, uh, roll over at some point in October, sweep these lows one more time, get down to 14,400 and, and then that'll be a bottom. And then from October to the end of the year, we'll get above 16,000 again, and we'll take out these highs we made back in July. So we'll get above 16,300 at some point by the end of the year. That's my whole analysis on NASDAQ. Let's take a look at ES. So on ES, it is weaker. Um, however, it, there is a lot of support here with the 200-day moving average. Now, before I go into the 200-day moving average, uh, let's just look at the market structure. So let's go down to the four-hour chart because the daily is clearly bullish. Uh, sorry, the daily is clearly bearish because we just sold off. We had a rally into resistance to the left and we got rejected. Nothing bullish there. You go to the four hour chart. Now the four hour chart's interesting because we've just been selling off, selling off, selling off, selling off. And we made a low, we made a higher low, we made a higher high and another higher high. But this isn't convincing whatsoever. Why? Because on NASDAQ, 
we got above this high here and we got above this high here. ES, we are below both of those. So this is a big sell off here. I would love to see us close above 43.83 to have confidence that we are bullish on the ES. So I'm not even, this doesn't even look bullish to me in my opinion. Um, and it would confirm that we're not bullish if we got below 4,300. If we got below 4,300, then we're likely going lower down to the 4,260s before rally. And same idea on the one hour. Um, again, nothing too bullish. So not to get excited there. Uh, let's zoom out to the weekly chart. On the weekly chart, lots of support here to the left at 4,300. So we could have bottomed on the ES. But now let's go back to the daily chart because there's something I want to show you. Every time we have a bear market and we rally above uh, upward sloping 50 day and an upward sloping 200 day, the first sell off is usually just a test of the 200 day moving average. And then when we get back above it, we actually take out the highs that we put in before going lower. So that would basically be saying that our next target right now is, is 4,700 before going much lower. And that's the camp I'm in. Why? Because let's go zoom out here. Here was the bear market last year and we were just selling off both MAs moving down, moving down, moving down, right? And then you get to May when they're both sloping upwards for the first time. The 50 days sloping up and the 200 days sloping up and we are above them for the first time. The next correction makes it to the 200 day moving average and then continues higher and takes up the high to the left. So let's zoom out and we'll see exactly what I'm talking about right here. We sold off, we got above both. They're both upward sloping right here, Friday, May. We come up, we sell off, we touch the 200 day moving average, we touch it again, and then we take out the highest to the left, right? So that's just saying that we're going to 4,700 right now. You go to 2018 bear market right here. We sold off, we got below, we're just chilling below. Both MAs are moving, are pointing down, they're pointing down. We finally get above and they're both pointing up about right here. They're both kind of pointing up, going sideways. And we got below it for one day, pushed up, took out the highs to the left, right? If you go back even more, next time we had a little bear market, we got below the 200 day moving average. Uh, it was kind of going sideways, but then it was sloping down here about February. So both sloping down, prices both below both of them. We push up, we finally close above both and they're kind of going down, but then they're kind of sloping up by about April 2016. So they're sloping up now. And the next correction, where does it go? To the 200 day moving average, right on it, come rallies back up and takes out the highest to the left. So typical pattern is every time there's a bear market, the next correction, after we come out of the bear market, tags the 200 day moving average, and then takes out the highs we made to the left. Basically implying that, you know, we may have bottom, we may chop around, right? But then our next target will be up at 4,700 to the left. So based on previous times, when there was a bear market, we came out of it, we tested 200, where do we go next? We take out the highs to the left. Two last things I wanna cover is the VIX and the dollar. So if you go to the VIX and we take a look at the VIX on the daily chart, typically every time we rally, we get a, a, to the 200 day moving average and we close back below, it usually marks a bottom for the market and we tend to rally. We also tend to test the 50 day moving average of the VIX. And when the VIX goes down, the market goes up. So we close below, we're retesting 200 again. I think the next target is gonna be down at about 15 for the VIX. And when we get to 15 on the VIX, ES and NASDAQ will be much higher. So that's just my whole thesis there. We'll go back and look what happened with the 200 day. The red one is 200 day, this is the 50 day moving average. So let's go back and take a look at what happened there. Last time was in March, we closed above on the 50 day moving average and the bottom was this bar right here. Monday, March 13th was the bottom. We chopped around, we closed below, closed above, closed below, closed above. But every time we were doing this, ES was making higher lows. So the low was back here. Similar setup to what we have right now. Once we closed convincingly below the 200, uh, we went straight to the 50 day moving average and the market was a lot higher. So let's go to ES on the daily chart at the same time period back in March, you'll see March 13th was the bottom, like I said, and then the VIX right here was chopping around, but as the VIX was chopping around, we were moving higher. Once the VIX got below the, the 200 day moving average, which is uh, March 22nd, we got below. After that, big push up on ES. Now, the only concern for being bullish in the market is DXY, because DXY is extremely bullish. And when DXY is strong, NASDAQ's weak, and the market is typically weak. So we have a cross up, I'm still targeting the 109 area. So because I think that we're going to that 109 area, I think there's a lot more weakness coming for the market. But 
at the same time, there's a bunch of conflicting evidence and everything else that it showed you that is pointing to us at least moving higher for the next week or so. So on a short-term basis, I believe that we're going to go higher in the market for the next week. But then after that, it's very likely we're going to take out the lows because I think the dollars continue to push up to 109. And that'll push the Nasdaq down to the low 14,000s, in my opinion. ES may get down to 4,200, 4,240. And then after that, push back up and take out the highs by the end of the year. So remember, when the dollar's strong, it's bad for the market. So nothing to say here other than it looks like we're just going to keep going. However, there's some resistance here to the left. So I, that's why I think the next week or so we could pull back in the dollar, get to 105, get to 104. But the eventual target being that 109 area, which is this fair value gap on the weekly from about 108 to 109.50. Just to wrap it up, I am expecting us to retrace up to you know 15.150 to 15.280, basically 50% retracing or 6.18 and get into the fair value gap on the four hour chart from the FOMC sell off and i am in longs the nasdaq that's my target there and uh, my average is uh, about fourteen thousand eight seventy three. thanks so much for watching give this video a thumbs up if you appreciate it subscribe for more videos just like this i post two videos a week one every sunday and one every thursday night thanks so much for watching and i'll see you in the next video